Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week was filled with news regarding an issue with the iPhone 13 series devices, as well as Apple Watch Series 7 on newer updates, more details about the upcoming iPhone SE 3, iPhone 14, and more. This is your news update for the week of December 26th, 2021. And if you don't want to know more about rumors and things like that, and you want to just listen to what the news is, I'm going to cover this week's news a little bit differently. I'll have news at the beginning, and then I'll let you know when we'll go into the rumors or things that might be coming in the future. So I'll cover just the news at the beginning, as some people have told me they don't want to hear about rumors and things. Now, the first thing is, if you have a Series 7 Apple Watch and you've installed the latest version of WatchOS 8.3, apparently some people are having issues with charging. I haven't seen this personally, but many say it charges extremely slowly. So as you'll see, it was a little bit slow there for some reason, but I'm at 98%. I've had it off the charger for a while. And if you're on the latest version, some people are saying they'll put it on the charger and it might go from say 5% and then increase by 2% over the the period of an hour or more. So there's definitely an odd bug, but it's only specific to the Series 7 Apple Watches. So that definitely could be a pain for some people, but I just wanted to make you aware that it looks like it's a known problem at this point. And if you have a Series 7 experiencing this, maybe try a reboot and then see if that resolves it until Apple patches it with an update, maybe with watchOS 8.3.1 or 8.4. It's been about a year since the introduction of Apple Fitness Plus, and to celebrate that along with the new year and the holidays, Apple has some new sections within the Fitness Plus app that you can actually go back and look at some of the workouts. So you'll see the best of 2021 that's listed here, as well as a new celebrate section with some new workouts. So there's about five new workouts here that you can choose from along with some new badges for the new year as well. So if it's something that you use, be sure to check those out as those have been updated recently. Now, if you use Apple Maps, Apple continues to update it depending on the city you live in. This past week, they updated Philadelphia with landmarks. And so Philadelphia has some rich history in the United States, if you're not familiar with that, where there's Independence Hall, where the Constitution was signed, as well as the Liberty Bell is there and much more. So you can see Liberty Bell Center here. They've updated the landmarks with 3D maps, more information and more. So that's been updated in Philadelphia. Last week, it seemed they updated Australia with the new maps. So they continue to do this. Hopefully they'll roll it out to everyone, but it seems to take quite a while for them to do this as it seems to be a manual process. So when it is done, it'll be very nice, but right now it just is in specific cities. Now, if you've been waiting to use Apple's digital ID, where you can use your phone as your, your wallet and also your digital ID to check through different things, such as maybe getting on an airplane or more, it looks like that's coming very soon. So if you've been waiting for that, the TSA, or basically the security agency in the United States, when you get on a plane, they're going to start allowing supported states to use this in about February at this point. And so that tells us a couple different things that tells us that the next update, probably iOS 15.3, will have something to do with that in it. It seemed to be in the code in previous versions, and they just haven't enabled it. And then also you'll need supported states to get behind that. And at this point, there's quite a few. There's about 30 states that are going to support this in the future. It will open up eventually. And here's the list here on the left. So if you want to see if your state's included, there's more and more that are being included. Of course, it's going to take a while for all of them to do this, but it looks like a lot of people are signing on. Of course, you don't have to do this, but it just makes it one less thing to carry. You'll be able to use your iPhone or Apple Watch. So that'll be really nice if you want to use that for convenience sake. Now, iOS 15.3 Beta 1 has been out for a little bit at this point, a little over a week. I've been using it full time on this device, but I talked about that yesterday in a follow up video, and it looks like that digital ID will be a feature in this update. Now, we don't know that for sure, but based off what we've seen in the past, that makes sense since we haven't seen any big features in it yet. And typically based on year over year, we may not have another update till Beta 2 for another couple of weeks. Last year, it took a little while before they released a beta 2 of iOS 14.4, and then it released to the public in late January. So I would expect a similar sort of release schedule where we'd have it at the end of January so that it's ready for February to have that digital ID ready. So that makes a lot of sense. Maybe we'll only have a couple betas. Maybe we'll have a few more betas. We don't really know until Apple does that, but typically I wouldn't expect anything this week or even next week possibly the following week, the week of the 9th or 16th. So it will be a little bit typically based off of year over year, what we see as far as updates go.
Now, as far as future products, we'll talk about that now. So if you're not interested in those, thanks for watching up to this point, but we'll talk about the iPhone SE three first. The iPhone SE three is said to basically be the same thing as we have here with the iPhone SE second generation. And it's been a couple years since they released this. And so the new version is said to look very similar, have a 4.7 inch display, the same sort of touch ID, although I was hoping for it to move over to the power sleep wake button and sort of have more of an iPad air style setup and maybe something different with the overall shape or design. But basically most people are saying it's going to be the same as what we have here with maybe some upgraded internals and upgraded camera, as well as hopefully a bigger battery. That's one of the downfalls of the SE compared to the latest phone. So a bigger battery, a faster processor, which is more efficient and probably a pretty inexpensive price, typically around 399 to start. And looking back, with iPhone SE 2's release, that was in April 24th when it released. So we could have a few more months, although more people are saying that it's going to be earlier this year. So we'll have to wait and see if that's true. But at this point, we can count on it as it looks like Apple is starting to ramp up production for it, or at least pre-production. Also, in a recent patent found by Patently Apple, Apple has developed a new fingerprint sensor which can not only read fingerprints, but faces and even transmit information between devices. As you can see here, this is what it kind of looks like in their patent. And according to the patent, it says, in some cases, the 2D or 3D image may be an image of a fingerprint, a face, or a scene in a field of view. In some cases, it may be useful to wirelessly transmit or receive information between devices. So we could see a new style touch ID that maybe has face ID built in. It's something I wasn't really thinking about, but that's something that they've recently patented and patently Apple found. And maybe that would go in a larger iPhone SE that's rumored to come out the following year, maybe the iPhone eight plus size device, something along that line with this sort of size and maybe a new style fingerprint sensor. So I would love to see touch ID make a return. Every year we see a new iPhone and we expect iPhone 14 in September again, just like we get one every year around that time. And this time around a site called blog do iPhone is saying there will be no physical SIM card tray in the next iPhone. Now we've heard things like this before in previous iPhones, and I'm not really sure the credibility of this website, but it does seem that this is something Apple would do to maybe free up some space internally, maybe open it up to put a larger battery, better thermals or things like that or hopefully not change it as it's something I personally like to easily be able to swap SIM cards. I know you can do this with an eSIM pretty seamlessly, but it's much easier just to pop a SIM card out, pop it into a new phone, and then be able to test that phone out. So I actually like the SIM card. I hope it doesn't go away, but we've heard this for a long time, and I think eventually it probably will go away as it's extra cost, it's extra plastic and metal, and doesn't seem to be necessary anymore with eSIMs. But let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Also to go along with the iPhone 14, many are saying that the notch is going away next year for the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max phones. So where they narrowed the notch this year, narrowed it, and then it protrudes a little bit more into the display. This time around, we may be getting a hole punch display provided by Samsung or LG, similar to what we have on the Pixel 6 Pro that I have here. And so a hole punch display, I actually have grown to really like if Apple can figure out maybe an under the display fingerprint sensor or face ID, like the patent I showed you earlier, that makes a lot of sense where they could reduce the overall need for sensors in the display. So we would just have a camera there where we would need that hole punch. But again, many people are saying this and it seems to be reiterated by many, many reliable sources. And some of those sources have a very good track record. So this seems to be believable as Apple does start getting things ready this early in the season so that they can produce millions and millions of phones later in the year. The upcoming 27 inch iMac should be showing up in a few months as production has apparently begun. However, some sources are saying it will have an LCD while others are saying a mini LED display similar to that of the iPad Pro. However, maybe there could be options such as a regular model and a pro model. So we don't really know since we're hearing mixed reports from different people, but it looks like it is getting ready for production or at least started production and will apparently have colorful options, maybe like that of the current iMac, but I tend to think it would be more along the lines of silver and space gray to be more on the pro line of things. 
Also, apparently Apple is still going to release an updated Mac Pro, but with Intel inside updated Intel chips for those that need them to do specific tasks that the Apple Silicon just doesn't do as well yet. So that could be something we see next with upgraded processors or maybe a way to upgrade the one you currently have. Now, if you have one of the new Apple Silicon devices, Apple is apparently planning to replace the chips every 18 months, which means we would see an M2 pretty soon with maybe a new MacBook Air. So that seems to make a lot of sense if they are replacing it every 18 months or so with an updated chip with maybe some increased functionality, maybe even better thermal control as well as better efficiency. So that could be just a few months away at this point. And the next generation chipset Apparently TSMC is expecting to start producing three nanometer chips for the M3 chip in late 2022 for release in 2023, which would go along with this 18 month cycle of Apple continuously updating them over and over. Now, Apple is still working on a mixed reality headset and all signs point to a 2022 debut. So lots of information going out about that all over the sort of supply chain. And Apple has recently hired Andrea Schuber from Meta who worked with Oculus. So they keep picking up people for AR and VR. And so it looks like we could have something new this year, maybe a one more thing. And so that's everything as far as what we know of the upcoming products for this past week, as well as some odd issues with the Series 7 Apple Watch and iPhone 13s. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.